Today we're going to discuss a variety of laws <coughs> in regards to parents' children, such as when parents make a declaration over a child, especially a negative declaration, saying the child is illegitimate, for example. Do we take it as a face value? Do we differentiate between father or mother? God forbid, if a father is in a deathbed, is about to die, can he transfer ownership to his son? And if yes, how, how much power you give to a gosses? Another question is, if someone, <coughs> excuse me, those years about to pass the, the, the borders between countries, and he declare untruthfully over someone that he is his son, and he has no family, can we take that as a declaration and that person is inherited him and go to a motel or hotel and he said, this is my son, and then he passed. Can you say that that person inherited him? How you treated inheritance of a saving account, a checking account, money market account, stocks account, bond account, but also obviously a continuation of the subject of convert the validity of conversion, the differentiation within the conversion. But first and foremost, we start with the law of the priest. Continue the law of the Kohanim. Chukeo Kohanim, again, we have the prohibition of a regular Kohen for marrying a divorcee or halutza. High priest, the prohibition against married widows. So we are, Tracted Kiddushin, page 78, two lines from the top of the page. אמר רב יהודה, כהן גדול באלמנה לוקה שתיים. When a כהן גדול violated the Torah law by marrying the widow, he received malkot, meaning lashes, twice. The same applied to כהן אדיוט, regular כהן, simple כהן, that violated the other rules, such as married, for example, divorcee. אחת משום קידושין, one, because he betrothed her, because the Torah said, Lo yikach, in Leviticus 21, the Torah said, the Kohen Gadol should not betroth um, widows, meaning he should not have any form of betroth, because that's the manner of lekicha. Ve'achat, and the second one, mishum lo yechalel, meaning the moment that he cohabited with her, he is under the category of desecration. It's called chilul, by desecrating her in that manner of cohabitation. So the Gemara understand the idea of two set of malkot. But how about velil kenami mishum lo yichalel zaro? How about the fact that he should deserve malkot because the Torah said he should not desecrate his uh, descendants, his future generation. So the Gemara said, So you have to say that here it's because his act of cohabitation was not completed. So the Minchat um, Chinuch in Reish Samech Vav in 266 have a discussion over that. The question is, is she get pregnant on that or not? It's called Atra'at Safek. And in short, Minchat Chinuch tried to prove that the main prohibition is by living together. Um, because she, she may be Shema Loti Daber, that maybe nothing happened in the sense of her not being pregnant. But anyway, Mativ Rava. That Rava challenged from the Mishnah in Tractate Makot, page 13. Almana Ugrusha Lokem Shnei Shemot. Kohen Gadol, that cohabited with a woman, that prohibited to him. So he deserved Malkot, and they said, because due to a two labels of prohibitions. My love, Shnei Shemot Vetulo, you mean to say that is only two label, la, uh, 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 labels, which means it's only receive one Malkot, one flagging for each prohibition, and not two, the way that Rav Yudah teaches us. So they said, Lo, Shnei shemot al ze u shnei shemot al ze. So it means he received the two set of malkot, one for widow and divorcee, 
that's a negative commandment, lo yikach, and the other one, the same idea, but lo yechalel. So you see that it's, that's the chidush el the shachar said, that um, it's called bi'at chilul, that he is cohabited and desecrated by doing so. Yachay maseifa. If that's the interpretation of the Mishnah, let's go to the last clause of the Mishnah. You have a regular Kohen that cohabited with Grusha v'chalutza, and no chayav ela al achat, because he is, um, if someone passed away and he didn't leave a children, so one of the brothers have the obligation, as the Torah tells us in Deuteronomy, to marry the, the surviving wife or to release her. So that woman is called chalutza. So what happened is, he deserved Malkot, um, only one, according to Avuda, twice. One is for the bethrod, Kiddushin, and one is for cohabitation. Because the whole prohibition of Chalutza is Rabbinic. And therefore, you have to say that um, actually he is liable to receive two sets of Malkot for his um, cohabitation with divorcee since she is forbidden due to a two labels. So he is not receiving another set of, of uh, Malkot on account of bin Chalutza, because it's only Rabbinic. So the Gemara asks a question, if that's the case, Vachalutza de Rabbanan, you mean to say that the prohibition of Chalutza to a Kohen is only Rabbinic Vehatanya. That's we learn in regards to Psulei Kuna, the invalidation of the Kohanim, Leviticus chapter 21, verse 7. Grusha, the Torah said, a woman, Vi'isha Grusha, Me'isha, a woman that divorcee from her husband, Lo Yikachu, should not take. Enli Ela Grusha, Chalutza Minayin. So how do you know that Chalutza is forbidden? Talmud Lomar, Ve'isha, the Torah said, and the woman. So it means, you see here is like superfluous. Um, mention of women so it serves to teach us that chalutza is forbidden to a kohen. So the prohibition of chalutza to a kohen, you see here is that it's from the Torah. It's a biblical. So the Gemara said, no, mi de rabanan. The idea, the Miri explains that the, the offspring is considering halal by the rabbinic law, and therefore we impose upon him all the stringency of kehuna that he cannot marry the psulei kehuna and he cannot contaminate it to a, a corpse, and, and he cannot serve um, as a Kohen, etc. Ukra asmachta ba'alma, in the Torah's statement is a merely support, but is not the true source of the halacha. Amar Abaye, you have either a high priest <coughs> or regular Kohen, Kidesh, he bethrow the woman that is not fitting, not valid for him. Loke. Baal, loke. Cohabited, he deserves malkot. Even he's not bethrowed her. Kidesh, loke, mishum, lo yikach. Baal, loke, mishum, lo yichalel. As you see, it is a similar set. Rava, Ma Rava disputed, and he said, no. If he bethrowed her, and then Baal, loke. Why? For the kiddushin, for bethrowed, and for the cohabitation. But if he betrothed lo baal, if he's not cohabitated with her, ain't no loke. Mishum dechtiv lo ikach ve lo yichalel. So the two warning attached to each other. Matam lo ikach, the reason is will not acquire her. Mishum lo yichalel, which means the whole idea of prohibition of kicha, it's because eventually it's reaching the cohabitation. So it's the leading point, the whole goal of Kiddushin is for the cohabitation. So the Kohen, is not um, liable for that matter of betrothed until he cohabited with her. So even we not warn him at the time of the betrothed, but it's only a tzafek, only a warning for something that's uncertainty because may he or later cohabited with her, that we have to say that we follow what the Gemara said in Tractate Shvot, page 3b, that, that the Atra'at safek, that if you're warning for something that's uncertainty, Shema atra is considering warning, or, as we said, the Adrama explains, also Tosfot Rosh, he bethrowed her to cohabitation, which is one of the three conditions we explain at the very beginning of this Masechet. 
אומרת הגמור, הוא מודה אביה במחזיר גרושתו. And Abaya agrees that in a case that one who takes back his divorced wife. So the Torah said, She'im kidesh velo ba'al sheno loke. So even the Torah prohibited it. So he betrothed, but he didn't cohabit it with her. So he's not received malkot. Why? Lekachta liot lo leisha marachmana. The Torah said clearly that you take her to, again, to be in. In to him as a wife, which means to cohibit with her. As the words of the Rahmana, this is a merciful one, the Torah, has stayed in the Torah. So it teaches that one is not liable to any form of uh, malkot, lashes, until he cohabits with her. Vehaleika. But he, in our case, he didn't do it. So therefore, he's not receiving malkot. So um, uh, Abaye tried to differentiate between מלקות and the prohibition for the כהנה and מחזיק גרושתו one return his divorcee in the כהנה in the priesthood is a special love לא ייקח לא יחלל versus מחזיק גרושתו so that's all depend upon the בעילה that's the ריטווה הוא מודה רבה בכהן גדול באלמנה the same applies to regular כהן some, some woman that prohibited to him, Rashi said, שאם בעל ולא קידש, שלוקה. That if cohabited did not betrothed her, that he deserved מלקות. What's the reason? ולא יחלל זרו באמר רחמנה, והרי הוא חילל. The Torah said, and he shall not profane his seed among his people, are the word of the Torah, merciful one in the Torah, and he, meaning the Kohen, by cohabiting with this woman, he profaned it. So, so the, the, the prohibition of the cohabitation is not depend upon the prohibition of the bethron. Ushnehem modim, and therefore the both of them agree, b'machazir grushato, that in case one who takes back his divorced wife, she'im ba'al ve'lo kidesh, שאינו לוקה. So they said that if that he um, uh, cohabited with her, but he is not betrothed her, so it means he engaged with intercourse with her, but without betrothing it, her, so שאינו לוקה, that is not flag. Why? דרך ליקוחין עשה תורה לתורה פורביד. them to re-establish their union only through the manner of taking, which means the betrothed. But he did not prohibit the act of intercourse on its own. That's one school of thought. Rabbi Yudah says, Bad Ger Zachar, Kevat Chalal. Rabbi Yudah says, the daughter of a male convert is like the daughter of male Chalal, and is prohibited from marrying into the priesthood. Tanya, Rabbi Yudah says, Bad Ger Zachar, Kevat Chalal Zachar, והדין נותן, מי חלל שבא מטיפה כשרה ביתו פסולה, even the father is, is okay, the daughter is, is unfeeling for כהונה, גר שבא מטיפה פסולה, נותן שפיתו פסולה. אז אני אומר לסד, מה לחלל שכן יצירתו בעבירה, because the חלל he is coming toward the cohabitation that is prohibited. כהן גדול בעל מנה יוכיח. So the idea that Kohen Gadol, that um, uh, who cohabits with a widow, demonstrate that the characteristic of having been created in sin is not relevant. She'en yetzirato be'avera abito p'sula. That even if his creation was not through a sin, yet the daughter from a widow is forbidden to a Kohen. So what do you see from here? That the issue of whether the father was created through sin or not, Um, um, is it for the, uh, uh, determining whether his daughter is forbidden to a Kohen. Now, Ma le Kohen gadol be'almana the reason that, that Kohen gadol, high priest that cohabited with a widow, he in this valid invalidated the, 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 the daughter, she can be a toba avira, that he is involved with sin with that cohabitation, versus a convert, that it's not. 
So you may say that when it's come to convert, the daughter may fitting for kehuna. So the Gemara rejected. It says halal yochiach. So you have the, here the halal that it's not depend upon the sin because the halal, the cohabitation is not to a sin that he allowed to bad Israel. But even though his daughter is prohibited for the uh, kehuna, his daughter unfit despite the fact that his act of intercourse does not involve in a sin. And this derivation of the law return. Is, uh, is, uh, one aspect is not the same as the aspect, which means a uh, Kohen Gadol, with regard to each of them, there is a unique reason for the halacha to be stringent. Hatzada Shavashavim, the common denominator of, for, for all of them, is that the, the halal, Kohen Gadol, and Almana, Sheinan Berova Kahal, that is the, unlike most of the congregation, in, that they both differ from the Jews of unflawed lineage, neither because the formation or the act of uh, intercourse involved with transgression, and their daughters are therefore unfit to marry into a priesthood. Afani Avi Etager, Sheino Berova Kahal, you bring the girl that is unlike the most of the congregation and his daughter, as a result, is also unfit to marry the priesthood. So what's the common denominator of all of them? Both of them. Where there is a, both of them have an element of sin. So how can one agree that the stringency that applies in the case of Halal and the Kohen Gadol, right? In both, they have the sin necessarily applied in the case of a convert, which is no element of sin. So the Gemara Gavu said, Lo teima, Kohen Gadol ba'amna yochiach, because it's not enough to fulfill the Kalva Chomer, ela eima mitzri rishon yochiach. As you know, convert, if he's Egyptian, the first generation, that if he marry Egyptian, the same one, as we explain in page 77, Yochiach, this proof that the, the invalidity of the daughter, it's not depend upon the creation of the sin, because the first mitri, it's not considering um, a source of sins, but even though all of that, the daughter is not fitting for priesthood. Tosfot elaborates on that and explain how and when, it's not always like that, but anyway. The first generation of Egyptian is not fitting to enter the congregation. And Ger allows, so you may say that the, 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 the daughter be fitting for priesthood. In the same manner, the first mitri, it's not the same as Halal. Which means the Halal is created in the scene. Mitzri, first generation, cannot uh, marry the lineage uh, Israelit. Ubito psula. Afani avi et ger, sheeno berov akal, pito psula. Ma la tzad ha-shavesh bem? Sheken poslim beviatan. So the, 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 the common denominator of all of them, that the um, woman is forbidden to a kohen through their cohabitation with her. So they said, v'rabi <coughs> yuda, Igmar rejected, it says, Barab Yudah, who is the author of this derivation, hold that the regular convert Gernam Eposel Beviato, render woman forbidden to a Kohen through cohabitation with her. Umaitela Bematzad Maidina. Barab Yudah derives these rules through the analogy from, uh, based on the very Kalva Homer against um, uh, the one we said earlier in regards to a psulei bat. So ha, now, since the Gemara uh, finished explaining the review of Rabbi Yudah, that it said that the daughter of Ger, Mel Ger, even she's born from the daughter of Israel, she's unfitting for priesthood. So now we go to two different avenues. Rabbi Lezer Man Yaakov Omer Ger, convert that married Israel. The daughter is uh, befitting for Kehuna, but if he married Giyoret, not. Tanya, Rabbi Shimon Ben Yochai Omer. Giyoret pchuta mibat shalosh nevi yom echad kshira lekiuna. 
שמר וכל הטף בנשים החיו לכם, that's famous משה, that's said before מלחמת יין במדבר, chapter 31, אבל לא פנחס היה עמהם. So it means that if you have a woman that converted less than three years in one day, בפילינג פור כהונה. ורבנן, החיו לכם לעבדים ולשפחות. So the, the, the arrive from החיו לכם, that's applied to a male and female servant, not to wife for yourself. וכולם יקרא אחד הרשות. This is from Ezekiel, which is also a coin. Chapter 44, verse 22, אלמנה וגרושה לא יקחו להם נשים, כי הם מתגלות מזרע ישראל. It says that the widow and divorcee, they should not marry. Only, so that basically applies to the coin גדול. But um, um, the only version. So what is מזרע from descendants of Beit Israel? So he said, רבי יהודה סבר, עד דאית כל זרע מישראל. So רבי יהודה hold until that a priest may marry a woman only if the entire seed is from those born a Jewish people, but not if one of the parents is a convert. רבי אליעזר בן יעקב סבר, מזרע אפילו מקצת זרע, of seed, meaning even a part of the seed is from the house of Israel, is sufficient to allow her to marry a Kohen. רבי יוסי סבר, רבי יוסי הול, כל מי שנזרעו בישראל, that um, one whose seeds, which means conceived in Israel, And the children of convert are conceived by Jewish parents. So Rashi explained, I explained in my book. Rashi said, So Rashi said, So Rashi said, in the language of the Gemara, means that Kol Zaro, it's, it's Israel Ksheri, meaning that both father and mother is a regular Israel. You cannot learn from Rabbi Yudah the, the way that we learn on page 77, Mishnah, the Rabbi Yudah hold that Israel shenasa Yisraelit, so obviously the child feeding for the priesthood. So Rashi said that the Rabbi Yudah meant that Ikar Azera, the essence of the seed who should be feeding, which means Zera that come from the father, that that's the essence. So that's, uh, we need to understand what Rabbi Yudah Yaakov meant when he said Mikzat Zera Kasher, that part of the Zera is the feeding. So, so Rashi said, even Zera Kachush, which means it's come from the mother, Gersh Nasa Yisraelit, etc., also feeding. So it's also Gmor and Chulin, 78, and it's also Ramban, and Reed, and uh, others uh, elaborate on this. But Rabbi uh, Shimon ben Yochai Sabar, the expression Betulot Mizera Beit Yisrael, Mi Shenizreu Betulea Bi Yisrael, which means One whose uh, hymen was formed from a Jew, which means a woman that was already Jewish when her hymen completed its formation, which occurs uh, originally at that age of Shalosh Anim V'yom Echad. Amar le Rav Nachman le Rava. So Rav Nachman said to Rava, 78b, Haikra, this verse, Reisha <coughs> Bechoen Gadol. The first, the beginning, referred to the high priest. That's what the Torah said. Almana or Grusha should not take as a woman, only Betulot. Vesefa be Kohen Ediot. That's the Pasuk. Valmana asher tiye almana mi Kohen. That's the way Rabbi Yudah explained it, Rashi said. So therefore, what do you see here? That the, uh, the allowance of a widow to uh, apply solely to the regular Kohen. So how come the middle of the Pasuk, they go from Kohen Gadol, the high priest, to a regular Kohen? without set in a clear way. Amar lei, Rav Asir Rav Nachman, Ein! That's true, that started with Khan Gadol and ended with Khan Gadol. So Rav Nachman challenged, Atav Kra Hachei. So it means that the, the, the Pasuk switch direction between Khan Gadol, Khan Gadol, without give us a signal. Amar lei, Ein! I can show you other places. Dichtiv, they said in the first Shmuel, chapter 3, Vener Elohim, that's the menorah that was in the tabernacle, Terem Yichbe, before is not yet gone out. Ushmuel Shochev Be'echal Hashem. And Shmuel, the prophet, was lying down in the sanctuary of God. So can this be, uh, verse take, take, be taken literally to mean that Shmuel laid down in the temple? V'alo en yeshiva ba'azara, el al malchei b'david bilvad. The, the Yad Ramah said that it's only allowance to sit in the temple courtyard applied to the descendants of King David. That's, we learn from the Pasuik, Al-Alamod Lesharet. 
ויבוא דוד וישב לפני השם. So that's uh, Rashi in Yuma 69. So they said, אלא נר אלוקים טרם יכבה בהיכל השם ושמואל שוכב במקומו. Which means that the house of the keeper of the Levite that was in a tabernacle. So, ואלמנה, so it means that sometimes the, 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 the פסוק uh, switch, turn, without saying it clearly. ואלמנה אשר תהיה אלמנה, אלמנה נא מכהן ייקחו. זה כמו שאומרת מכהן אם מישראל לא, אחי כאמר, מכהן ייקחו, משאר כהנים ייקחו. תנא נא מאחר, מכהן ייקחו, משאר כהנים ייקחו. רבי יהודה אומר, מן המסים לכהונה ייקחו. רבי יהודה לטעמי דאמר, בת גר זכר, כבת חלל זכר. כל שאתה נושא ביתו, אתה נושא אלמנתו, וכל שאתה נושא ביתו, אתה נושא אלמנתו. So according to רבי יהודה, the beginning of the פסוק, כי אם בתולות מזרע בית ישראל, that's אסמכתא, that's a remez, for the daughter of גר זכר to priesthood. וחתם סופר, have a beautiful responsa, one of his books. So they explain that it was a time, unfortunately, that was a Kohanim that of the Avodah Zarah, that there was a Kohanim that worship idols. Um, and he said, excluding Tzadzai Tzadok HaKohen, the descendants of the righteous Tzadok, the, the priest. So therefore he explained the Pasuk, the Pasuk man, since they are worship idols, and since they don't have a Miyuh Hasim, because they involve no Ravim Biznut, so therefore he said, Almana, you take specifically from them and not from others. Anyway, it's a beautiful Chadam Sobe. Rabbi Yossi, Rav Gershik Nesagiyor, Etamar Rav Nuna Bishmede Ula, Alachak Rabbi Rabbi Yossi, Vachanam 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 which means convert that Mary Giyoret, so it, the daughter of unfitting for Kehuna. Amar le Rav Nachman, Amar le Una, Bali Malech, if someone come to the best name and ask if he can marry the daughter of Giyor Giyoret, Morim Moker Rabbi Yezer Ben Yaakov, Kenat, Nasa, En Motsim Moto Mimena, Ker Rabbi Yossi. However, you don't have Kfiyat, you cannot force out, so if it happens, happen. So it's a big discussion among the poskim. Horato, Shelo Bikdusha, Velato Bikdusha, you have a baby that was born, so the process of, 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 of um, conceiving was not in a sense of sanctity, but later there's Baal Tshuva, etc., etc., so the baby was born, there's already well Kedusha. So is that baby girl allowed to marry with a Kohen or not? Furthermore, it was a question that posted in Israel, very painful. It was one of the villages, one of the farms in Israel. It was a woman that, um, in a very old age, and suddenly when she gets very old and sick, she starts saying uh, she survived the Shoah and everything. She said that um, she can't. But the way that they ask a question about the conversion, it turned out is a very problematic. So they said to her that she, if she's willing, she'll do a giyu lechumra. She'll do another giyu, but do it lechumra. So she agreed. She has a daughter. So they did tevila also with the daughter, lechumra. So now the daughter met a guy that is a coin. And now they ask a question. Since you don't know at the first place if she is really, you can depend upon elderly lady statement or not, and since you make the whole gear only the chumra, so can you permit the daughter, <coughs> who based on original gear the chumra that you did with the mother, and you say that this daughter cannot marry a coin or can marry a coin? It's a discussion among the poskim based on our sugya. Now in Mishnah dealing with Nehemanut, with the trust of parents to say something about their children. Ha'omer b'ni mamzer, if someone says, this son of mine is mamzer. So Rashi said, Adam karov la'atzmo, person close to himself. But the other said, that ain't Adam asim atzmo rashai, person should not make himself look a, a bad. But um, the other man, Amiri said, that someone else that cohibited or with his wife and he called him sons. But again, as we said, uh, the halacha is, um, I'm just reading it from the uh, Koran translation to English, um, the Gemara, Rav Steinzeltz. They said here in the, uh, from the Rambam, Ilchot Yisurei Biyah, chapter 15, in Shulchan Aruch, Heaven, Ezer 4, the presumed father of a child is deemed credible to state that his son is a mamzer. If the father is a Kohen, he is deemed credible to state that his son um, is a son of a divorced woman or a son of, of Chalutza. It is not a lacha, this is not the halacha, and the child was born to unmarried woman, 
that's the Tumat Adeshen, upon whose word this man is assumed to be father, that's also the Rema. If a married man st stated that his child is presumed to be his son, and is not in fact his son, the child is definite Mamzer. This al applies the child was no children of his own, but he does have children, the grandfather is not deemed credible to impact the status of any of them, even the son. If a woman admits that her husband is not the father of a child, but claims that the father is a Gentile or a slave, the child is not a mamzer, since her husband cannot dispute her claim. Once a child is presumptive status of unflawed lineage based on the word of the father, the father is not deemed credible to state that the child is in fact mamzer, that's the rema. The Allah follows Rabbi Yuda. that's basically more in Baba Batra. But more on that is the Ebenezer chapter 4. Anyway, they said the non-Eman. It's not incredible. As we just read, if both of them, me and a husband and wife, agree that the fetus in the womb is a mamzer, and I'm Neemanim, you cannot believe them. Rabbi Yudah Omer Neemanim. Rabbi Yudah said, yes, you can trust their word. That's what Yom Tov explained on Neeman, that, uh, that um, you can take the word. In both cases, they, they, we believe their father. Anyway, the Khatam Sofer and Pnei Yoshua and others tried to explain more on this, but running out of time, right? Okay. So here we talk about the presumption of legitimacy. So even this come to, to the, the, the fetus, you can take the word, neither the father nor the mother. Chabudu manem anim. The Buddha say you can trust them, believe them. In both cases, the father is believed to say that the son is a mamzer. Vatanya yakir. Torah said in Deuteronomy 21, verse 17, you need to recognize. So, the Rashbam in Baba Batra 127 <coughs> said that the word yakir look like superfluous. And it's come to teach us yakirenu laacherim. The person is trust to say this is my first son. The sages said no. You cannot um, take his word. You not uh, uh, credible. He is deemed credible only to state which his son is the firstborn. So you go, by the Rabbi that says that he can, uh, he shows knowledge, so the, 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 the word is that the father is incredible to attest the identity of his sons. So according to the rabbis, he shall acknowledge what he needed. So they said, but tzarich heikeira. So one who require identification, which is the, the husband and wife went overseas without children, returned with children, unknown who is the firstborn, so therefore, the father needs to identify that. Ma'alemai chil cheta. Latet lo pishnaim, obviously when it's come to law of inheritance, which you know that this is a very, very painful subject. Deuteronomy 21. Pshita, nama lilkra. So he said, migo de ibai met velei matana. You may think that, that, that since if the father wants to give his son a present of any of his possession, me lo yahivle, can he not give it to him? Of course he can. So therefore follows that a father can convey a double portion of his possessions in the firstborn of inheritance to one of his sons by identifying that son as the firstborn. So he said, Ben So this is a probably fell to the father ownership after he identified the firstborn son. Since at the time of the identification he was unable to give this property as a gift, so the verse is required to teach that he can bequit a double portion from it to one of his sons by identifying him as the firstborn. And according to Rabbi Meir that said earlier, page 62, 63, a person can convey something that has not yet even come into existence. So Yakir Lamali. So why do I need the expression he should recognize? According to a mayor, a father can give one of his sons even property that he did not have yet. So why you don't need the Pasuk? So the search and a flu law 
כשהוא גוסס. That when the property came into the father possession, one is a uh, moi bal, which means he's about to die. At which point he cannot transfer ownership of any of his property to others. So it, uh, it is with regard to such property that the verse states, he shall acknowledge to teach that the son, whom the father states that the firstborn will receive a double portion even of the property. So the, 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 as we said, it's a question uh, posted time before, you know, early time, World War I, people used to cross Russia, Poland, all those places in Eastern Europe, the borders, for many reasons. So a person crossed, he's a lonely person, crossed with another person, young man, and he said to the people on the borders, the officers, communists, whatever they are, he said to them, this is my son. Let them pass. He lied, obviously, but then he passed away. So now before the best din is come, the question he left inheritance. Do you transfer to that person that he claim it's his son or not? The same applies if someone go to a motel, hotel, and he declare, this is my son, it's not true. But that's what he said. And then he passed away. How you treated that? So the, the, the whole idea of Bechor Pishnaim, you give the firstborn double. So the, the, the question is, Bemochzak velo baraui. So uh, today we have all these different saving accounts. We have a money market and you have a, uh, stocks and you have bonds and you have all these uh, different things. So uh, do you treat it as a ra'ui or you treat it as a muhzak? Based on this Gemara is a lot of uh, rabbinic responsa.